Hey, I'm Marshall Allman. Sometimes you see me on such films as... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm an actor, and uh, I play Donald Miller in the movie Blue Like Jazz. Um, man, it comes down to this. Bottom line is, like, it's no longer our film. The second we had 4,500 people give... On average, $80 per person, $345,000 in 30 days to see this film made. It no longer became like something we wanted to do. It became a responsibility to like, wow, man, this is like a really palpable thing that's really important to a lot of people, you know? And so knowing that, it's just like, it just, it just totally, um, Man, I just, I, I, I can't even explain how energized that made me to want to do this film with excellence, to want to do it right, to want to get behind it. It's like a really fresh, this whole thing, it's, it's beyond, I, now it's, it's I, I'd say before even the film is released, it's beyond a film, it's more of like a, a people group. It's like a, it's a community, you know, and I think if you ask any of the Kickstarter backers or any of the cast and crew of the film, like, this is like... A really amazing thing to be a part of and to stand up and be counted in you know and uh, it's it's really exciting you know that extra element is just I mean I don't think you can't you can't um, you can't fabricate that you know it's just so real and authentic I think I really honestly think this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to tell a story that's this meaningful to so many people and um, man I'm just I'm just so grateful to be a part of it um, uh, me and my husband uh, have been married for a while, and um, he went he went off uh, overseas. He was in the army, and came back with not like with his faith completely rocked, and not being able to reconcile the two, and not even being able to talk about it. And this film was uh, a like just a starting place for a new conversation in our marriage, and it's totally opened up the intimacy in our marriage to be able to discuss the tough issues of faith that normally you would be ashamed to have. Thank you so much for making um, a movie that's relevant that I feel like I could actually take people to and help them understand what I believe or how I am as a Christian. Um, thank you so much for making a film that wasn't heavy-handed in its message but was actually a really strong story. Thank you for telling my story. You know, I went off to college and... Um, completely lost sight of, of how I was raised and the beliefs I was raised with and um, came back to it and this film perfectly captured that. Thank you so much. I was like completely um, burned by members of the church in, in a way that's really, um, I felt completely alone. So th thank you for representing it accurately. I mean, I mean, people are in tears saying this. Like, um, you know, on the bus tour once a night, we'd probably get someone who just felt so compelled to like stand up and say thank you for making such a unique film that captures something that hasn't been presented in the media about about Christianity really or about the experience of Christianity in America which is so surprising to me because when I read this script I was like wow like you know I hadn't read the book I'd heard of the book and you know so it had a positive reputation in, in, in my opinion or in my you know in my mind but um I read the script and I was like, wow, this is such an American story, like, you know, raised in the church, goes off to college and doesn't know how to reconcile the two, you know, and where, where you end up after that, it's, you know, it's a crapshoot, really, for people. So, um, you know, I was just like, wow, this, this, is, this is America, this is so many people that I know, and I'm so excited for everyone to find a place in this story and find it, and, and for it to be a bridge, you know, between communities, the conversation has effectively been ceased, you know. So I'm really excited uh, for this film to be a, a bridge, you know, for this for it to be a common ground for people to uh, expand their understanding, for it to be a place where people can say, like, you know, not feel so alone in their struggles and, and maybe the doubts that they go through. I'm so excited for it to uh, change preconceived notions from both parties, you know, I, I'm, I just, I, I'm, I'm excited for this to be a fresh, a fresh look, you know, 
fresh and open door to a new conversation, you know, without all the bad hitch. I mean, obviously the book is a series of essays uh, with a middle-aged guy that's like, you know, reconsidering his faith after the culture shock of attending Reed College. And uh, they changed it to a 19-year-old kid who actually goes to Reed College, you know, doesn't just audit classes there. So there were already liberties taken in the storytelling and the script. So uh, in the writing process, Don had already kind of dissociated himself from the Don in the script and who he was Don in real life. So there was that liberty there. So I think, you know, on set, Don was, you know, once I... He, he, he knew my, he, you know, knew I got the part and everything. I think he did a really great job of just, you know, trusting me and letting me play it, you know. And I think from early on, the way he saw I was doing it on camera, he was just like, man, this is, this is right on. So he was just a really valuable asset to have on, on, on the set. You know, uh, some, there was a, a few scenes where the day of, like, we had Don, like, do some fresh rewrites, you know, because we'd written the script two years you know, four years before we went into production, you know, he went over it again with new eyes and, you know, adjusted some of the dialogue to help. I mean, we were very, uh, we were very concentrated on making sure that the tone, you know, was, was pitch perfect, you know what I mean? Because it's a fine line we're walking in, in this film and we wanted it to, um, be very specific, you know, in communicating the story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, having him on set was awesome, and I couldn't have, you know, I, it was, and forming a relationship with him throughout this process has been awesome, because I found that the same guy he writes, uh, you know, the same guy that writes those books is the same guy he is in person, which was, I mean, it was really refreshing, honestly, to see that sort of authenticity, and he's just the funniest dude on the planet. You know, <laughs> I wanted to, like, you know, that was the thing, in doing the part I wanted to, I, you know, it's not him, but it's him, so I tried to just be around him as much as possible, read all of his books, like, read what he's read, you know, every book mentioned in the script I tried, I, I read, um, you know, I tried to write a book, you know, in the years that we had leading up to the film, you know, I just wanted to capture the essence of Donald Miller as much as I could, um, and especially like a youthful sort of, uh, you know, characterized version of, of Donald Miller, you know, so, you know, I, I hope, I hope I do Donald Miller fans proud. Complete, it's hard to write a freaking book, man, it is hard, I have so much, you know, that was one of the amazing things that I realized about Don, and I think it's true for all great artists, is that all great artists, you see their work and you go, man, I could do that, and then you try, and then you, like, look back on what you've done, and you're like, man, actually, that's pretty tough. And that guy's pretty good. You know what I mean? And Don, that's what Don's writing does. It makes you want to write. It makes you think you could write too, which is so incredible because I would love for, uh, you know, a raise of hands of how many people attempted to write a neo-memoir right after they read Blue Like Jazz or A Million Miles in a Thousand Years or any of his books. You know, that they start journal journaling like feverishly for two months only, only to go back and read their stuff and go like, man, it's not quite as funny or touching or eloquent or... Beautiful, <laughs> as what Donna Miller can do, you know, which is, it's awesome. It's genius and accessible at the same time. Music has always just played, like, a really huge role in my life. I love music. I was raised in Austin, Texas, so, you know, I was lucky enough, you know, that when I was in high school, I was, you know, discovering bands like Modest Mouse or Annual Nose by the Trail of Dead and, uh, you know, even now, like, Gary Clark Jr. When I first got out to L.A., I went to high school with Gary, man, and he's just... God, that guy blows my mind. He's so amazing, authentic, talented. He's the real deal. And when I got to L.A., one of the first people I met was Mark Foster, and um, we just hit it off immediately. And, you know, I've been a big supporter of his music. He's been one of my favorite musicians ever, you know. So uh, being his friend and being able to support his music and watch him... Uh, blow up, you know, and foster people. It's been, like, a long time coming, you know. I've known him for nine years, and he's just a dear friend of mine. And awesome guy. Couldn't wish the best for him. I mean, the success he's had is... Well, I could say that I saw it way back when. Like, I knew it, you know. It's just so great for the rest of the world to see it, too. And, you know, it's it's a joy for me. Music does so much for me. Uh, number one, well, I, I wish I was as talented at, at music as I do love it, you know. But I'm just... I don't know, man. I... I have, like, every instrument in the book at home, but I, I like, I'm just not that 
good at it, you know, maybe one day. Um, but, uh, man, I just love, I love supporting artists. I love music because uh, I always say that um, music is the fastest way to communicate a spirit and acting is the fastest way to channel one. And, um, you know, music is just so powerful with being able to change the atmosphere of a room, uh, being able to transport you to a place very quickly. So as an actor, music, you know, I didn't set out to be an actor. I had a joy for music, you know, way back. But once I became an actor, I was like, wow, music is such a powerful tool to help me go to a place and stay and kind of meditate in a world, you know, or an emotion or, you know, an experience. And uh, so it's, it's become invaluable to me. And I, and I love supporting musicians that I care about. I've got a film coming out called Jane Mansfield's Car. With uh, It's directed, written by Billy Bob Thornton, starring Billy Bob Thornton and Robert Duvall and John Hurt. And Kevin I mean, the cast is so noteworthy, it's ridiculous. And me. You know, it's like all these Oscar winners and me. And that was just, I mean, that was life-changing to work on, you know. Um, and all those guys were so fantastic. And I'm proud to call them friends, sort of. <laughs> I mean, you know, working friends. Uh, um, I learned so much, and it was it was invaluable experience for me. So that's coming out at some point. It premiered at Berlin Film Festival. Um, got some other things in the work that you know uh, they're in the pipeline, but writing my own stuff, directing my own stuff. Uh, you know, I want to. I'm I'm very passionate about producing and directing. It's a little hard with a full time acting career, but I'm gonna do it. You know, you haven't heard that ask of me yet. Man, I love a challenge. I love a challenge, I love pushing myself to the brink of my capabilities, and I love telling amazing stories, and I don't care what role I play in telling amazing story, I don't care if I'm at a party with 20 people, or if I'm like working on an Oscar winning film, or if I'm like writing a song, or if I'm a freaking gaffer on, a, on an independent student film. If it's a great story, I want to tell it, I want to get my hands in there, I want to get dirty, and I want to like craft it, you know? Um, and and, uh, you know, that's what I want. I, I want, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm an adventure junkie, you know, I love it, I love it. And so, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to tell more, um, you know, I've got to do it a couple times, but like telling real life stories and real characters and, uh, you know, I want to, you know, I want to do it. I want to Meryl Streep it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Daniel Day-Lewis said, I want to, I want to go off on this place, man. I, you know, I'm just really passionate about that. I'm passionate about being passionate. Kind of, uh, I think I'm going to explode in about five seconds.